stone man, dust man, who will take your soul, tapping out your life on rocks in a gritty, dirty hole, breathing in the sparkles to the deepness of your chest, cutting like a million knives until you lay at rest. All your life you strove and toiled, trying to make a mark, wishing for that one big job to pull you through the dark. Things of beauty built from nought, shaped and formed and fused, as rich as any tapestry to keep the rich amused. The corded arms and twisted joints, the back that's never straight. Whoever loves their children should not give them to this fate. always something about the rocks that draw me into it. I think from a very small child I always loved to break a rock open to see what was inside which annoyed my father intensely and I'd spend hours down at the river smashing rocks open much to danger to life and limb and uh, just to find the colours and patterns and textures inside the stones. So I was born in a stone village in, in England, I don't know if that had anything to do with it cold bugger of a place, so I probably would have avoided stonework, you would have thought. <laughs> it's a love-hate relationship. The negative parts of it sway you to think it would be lovely to have a job in an office and you're sloshing around in the mud and everything's slippery, all the rocks are frozen into a great solid mass. Everybody's interpretation of what makes a work of art or what makes stonework special seems to vary. Um, certainly putting your idea of the stone's beauty into the wall and then having your own personality inf sort of inflicted on that stone's character because there's so many different types of stone and each of the types of stone have their own character. So that, that I think that you have to really love stone in order to get a beautiful product. People who hate stone generally have pretty ordinary work and they're just doing it for a job. It's jobs that you remember because you worked for a hundred days straight without a day off and work 70, 80 hours a week. So you remember that for its own physical labour point of view and other jobs you remember because even like this fireplace behind me was because you wanted to create something special. And so, and over the years there's been many hundreds of things from houses and churches through to things like this fireplace to retaining walls. And so to be to say what sticks in my memory the most. I think the only honest answer would be that things that I haven't done stick in my memory the most, like looking at some of the rock formations in Kakadu Park or some of the work by other stonemasons that very, very rarely, but sometimes they're just magnificent, they really strike a chord. Stone is a very honest medium, it's about being honest with, with the stone, it's about drawing what the stone has to offer out of it and having an honest product at the end of the day. You hate it when it bites you, you hate it when it won't do anything reasonable and it breaks into a hundred pieces and the quarry is supplied you with a terrible product and you're sloshing around in mud, etc. Then there's the great joys of being supplied beautiful stone and, and, it, and it's kind in every respect and it's, it's a thing that makes the day flow by so quickly. Um, but yeah, the ups and downs of any professional job, I guess. It's not all beer and skittles. I don't think it's a dying trade. What is dying, I suppose, is because it's so labour intensive and because young people don't particularly want to do something that physically hard anymore. It's quite difficult to get people who will stay in it. A lot of people want to have a go at it, but it's very rare even to have people last longer than a few years. Um, and I guess 100, 200 years ago, there wasn't so much choice. You either did it or you didn't, but if you didn't, you starved. Some jobs you just do because no one cares at all. Like if you're doing stone pitching for a, for a culvert, some, someone's draining, the sewerage works or something, you don't put your heart and soul into that, um, but other things you do. Well it seems a mighty puzzle why one should join this mob. 
where not 100 years ago it was a convict's job. But the smell of gold is strong, you know, whatever form it takes. And when you're working for yourself, you're worth just what you makes. With the great blue sky above you, the sunshine and the rain, it makes it little trivial, the most trying sorts of pain. And when your arms are shaking, and your dust coat thick and grey, you tell the lads, looks good boys, we've had enough today. But the morrow comes too early, just like it always does. And if the question still is why, well, it's just because.